Known as a psalmist on mission, recording artist and worship leader John Shabaglian is helping people draw closer to the heart of God and changing the world in the process. He joins us now on 100 Huntley Street. Welcome, John. Oh, Laura, so nice to be with you. What a joy to be here. And yeah, this vision of making musicians um, to be trustworthy in God's eyes. Uh, that has been a journey. Music's like the international language, you know? In yeah. every place you go, it's like the neosporin of the soul. But mm. God made it in a way, it touches humans on such a deep level. And and stewarding that call personally, and then now trying to raise up an army of others to do the same, it's been a joy. It's incredible. And this kind of uh, term, psalmist on mission, some of our viewers watching might now, right now, they might know of the Psalms in the Bible. Of course. But what is a psalmist for those who don't know? Yeah, it's a great question. So honestly, guys, I never even used the word till like five <laughs> years ago, but like I felt like the Lord said to me five years ago, John raised up trustworthy psalmists. Psalmist is like a musician for God. Mm -hmm. And so it's no longer a musician to find my identity, make music so people like me on Instagram. I already can drink in that I am loved more than I will ever be because of being his son. Yeah. Then I just get to use music to serve a hurting world. Mm -hmm. So now you're a psalmist, not a musician for you, a psalmist, a musician on his mission, psalmist on mission. I mean, you know, when you talk about um, the role you've had in the last few years, actually, in pursuing reconciliation mm -hmm. among different people, supporting people while they pursue it, uh, yeah. this is something that's right in your DNA. And it's actually an interesting calling God has placed on your life. Will you tell us a little bit more about your history and why reconciliation matters so much to you? I call this story my God set up story because it wasn't because John was in a perfect position. I spent my life as a recording artist and, and, and making music. And, and so often I felt like I had to help God fulfill the calling on my life. I had to be in the right position and have, uh, meet the right producer or connect with the right leader. And, and yet the whole time, even because I grew up in a lot of shaking in my own family, even when I didn't know who I was, God knew who I was. So the weightiness of that is I literally have two significant bloodlines coming in me. Um, I'm um, uh, half Armenian and I'm half German Mennonite. Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually, you know, birth, you know, my, so much of my family is here actually from in Ontario, uh, Canada, which is really special, the German Mennonite side. It collided with 1700 years of Christianity mm -hmm. in the Armenian side, but that had incredible sorrow through the genocide. And yet the p peacemaking Mennonite side came this musical and peacemaking thing. And, and as the story goes, actually, my, my parents couldn't have children. And my, eventually my, my, my mom finally prayed to, uh, to loan a child to the Lord. And my mom got pregnant, gave birth to my twin brother. And then the doctor said, get ready for exhibition B. And she's like, what does that mean? And I was like, here I come. So I don't remember it very well, but that's the story I hear. And so um, to see how God's hand has been on me and my family in the growing. And I feel like my life in so many ways has been commandeered by generational faithfulness. But even though I spent a lot of time uh, when I didn't really know my culture with the African-American culture, I was like the white Armenian dude in the all black youth choirs, you know. Um, and, and yet in the fullness of time, and um, I was asked to be the worship leader on the 100 year of the Armenian yes. genocide in Istanbul, Turkey. And four years before that, I was in an artist conference outside of Nashville. And in a worship time, I ended up hugging a guy uh, in a total vulnerable spot. I was crying, you know, God will use music and put you in the right spot to set you up. You know, yeah. after I hugged him, I found out he was a Turk. Mm. Turned out he was a world class violist. He toured all over the world. And four years later, um, after I went home and kind of like puked out this song, reconciliation song. I'm like, do I have a Turkish friend now? They're supposed to be our enemies, but I can feel God pushing me to not run away. Four years later, um, I, I met my friend Orhan on the, uh, in Istanbul face to face. And then on the conclusion of this three day historic event, they did a documentary and everything. We were asked to share our story and our song in front of Turks, Armenians and Kurds. If you can understand the weight of that as an Armenian, 1.5 million of our people were exterminated just because they're Armenian. My own grandparents fled for their lives yeah. from the genocide. The problem is many of my people's Armenians, we hold on to the wounds like a badge of honor mm. um, and like the, they owe me. And you know what? It was atrocious what happened. Genocide is evil. The things that are happening in this world, yeah. uh, crimes against humanity, it's evil. It grieves God's heart. The problem is we also have 1700 years of Christianity, which means Jesus told us to bless our enemies. Yeah. And so as an Armenian, I had to decide, am I more Armenian first or am I Christian first? Yeah. 
And the Lord actually used a Mennonite missionary to invite me into that work. The providence of the Lord was colliding my two cultures. And so now when I stand with our African-American brothers or our Ukrainian brothers or whoever else or our Jewish brothers or or whoever is wounded in the middle, we can stand together and we can look like the words of Jesus. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. So inspiring and so encouraging and a message the world needs so much right now. You know, we're watching wars continue to unfold in Ukraine. We're watching new wars break out in the Middle East and we're watching terrorism. We're watching horrible things unfold. And there are many, many conflicts, not just these bigger ones we're seeing. It's across the globe. Um, And in this ministry calling, you've had to, you know, encourage people to pursue reconciliation and the body of Christ to choose the hard way, which is forgiveness. It's not easy, uh, but we're peacemakers. You've written this new song, Symphony of Peace. Tell us a bit about that. You've written it. You've co-written it. What an initiative. Actually, Symphony of Peace came uh, last year in one of the most costly seasons of my life. And yet the Lord positioned me in a beautiful songwriting session in Nashville with Tim Atape. He's Nigerian, so I'm already loving the cultural <laughs> thing. And then um, in the middle of the, my personal, um, personal deep ache, the Lord was writing a symphony over me. It gets even deeper when you think that actually my own daughter's name is Symphony. The Lord put my own daughter's name in the middle of a song and then... Um, And then after discipling four years of psalmists across California, we actually put a choir together from all four years and they are the choir uh, in on the song. And um, and so the Lord would use um, and even for the first time, actually put my own daughter symphony in the song and the Lord would use. And and in a time when our world is, is in so much shaking. He, we are singing the red letters of Jesus. Blessed are the peacemakers, mm. for they will be called children of God. And we're asking God, Lord, let me be a symphony of your peace. And I want to encourage us all that it's not just that needs to happen for the world. Mm-hmm. We need to be a symphony of peace in our marriages. Yeah. We need to be a symphony of peace at our workplaces. When people cut us off on the freeway, there's all the micro ex- opportunities to honor God, to be found faithful. And when by doing so, Uh, It's not it's not just it's not taking the cowardly way. It's taking the way of the master. Mm. I uh, what I'm learning after such a a costly season um, that the Lord is that Jesus is actually not just our savior, but he's also our example. Mm -hmm. And I think we usually look at Jesus as our savior. And so he's like, he did it. So I'm good. Actually, he did it. So you get to follow. Mm. And as the words of our Lord, are you greater than your master? Mm. Right. It's amazing because I love how you're saying in the small decisions every day, we can choose to be peacemakers when someone cuts us off, when somebody's stressed around us, because it's in those moments where we develop the discipline to yes. choose to be peacemakers when it really counts in the sense of the ripple effect of if we don't. Well, I would even add on that. It's, it's, it's um, those pain moments. Oswald Chambers will say that um, it's, uh, it's, it's those moments that actually just expose whatever is. Yeah. So um, mm. if we are not preparing with the Lord in the secret place, if we're not talking to him when nobody's looking, there's not going to have a grace to not blow up on people yeah. when, when pain comes. Because we don't plan for pain and sorrow. Mm-mm. We try to insulate from it. We're really good in the Western culture with insulating. I mean, we got Aflac. We got, we, got, we got it all. We're trying to protect ourselves. We got pills and medicine to keep pain away. And yet the, uh, um, C.S. Lewis says pain is God's megaphone. Mm-hmm. And I don't like it at all either. But somehow it's that formation that happens when we spend time with him. So that when we are disrespected and we are wounded, we we are actually learning to experience part of Christ. The Bible actually calls it the fellowship of his sufferings. Those have been part of the Bible that I've never really like enjoyed. You want to skip over when Paul yes. talks like that. The problem is that may be some of the greatest gold. Mm-hmm. The 24 carat of Jesus may be hidden in the deepest parts of sorrow. Mm-hmm. And if we say abort because that doesn't feel great, we might actually be missing out who Jesus, a big part of the father himself. It was uh, going back, you know, when you're when you were 16. That's when you met the Lord very deeply in some mm. of your greatest pain. Yeah, and even this gift began to come out of it. I, I could think about a song God gave us one on this last record. It's called "Hold Me Together," yeah. and uh, uh, and uh, it's, it says, "Lord, I knew it that you would come and rescue me, pull me through it, even when I crumbled, cracked, and I blew it, because there's nothing like not being alone." Cause your faithfulness and mercies are new and your promise of devotion is true 
From the rising to the setting of the sun, you hold me together. And I think about going back to when I was 16 and my heart was on fire and I went to school crying because my family was falling apart and I didn't know if God was real. And I started searching every major religion to see whoever you are, if you are, if there's somebody out there, I just need help. See, when things are chill, you don't have to have God because you've got everything else. But when things get black and white, it gets for real. And um, it was actually in that moment, I didn't realize it at all, but God was actually forming a little psalmist. He used music that's like the neosporin of the soul. And he brought me in. I would just lock myself in a room and start banging on the piano. I didn't even play the piano, but I had an ear and I started just crying and talking to God, hoping he was there and paying. And I started writing music. And then I started actually taking a a chapter a day before I went to bed in the Bible. I was like, hey, if you're real and if I'm going to find you, it's probably going to be through the scriptures. Hopefully. Actually, at first I tried to look for loopholes. Don't tell anybody. (laughs) The good thing is I found a God way bigger than I planned on. Um, And in the process, he was actually healing me through music and his spirit and his word. And he was laying the ground, the ground foundation, groundwork for in so many ways, what he's done through my life now. Yeah. Psalmist mission, it's 20 year curriculum of being crushed and loved by God yeah. through the scriptures. And hopefully I can now say more than ever, follow me as I follow Christ. Let's go save a broken world because he's a faithful God. John, I'm just so thankful that uh, God has moved in your life in these ways. And, you know, I spent years studying the Old Testament in my uh, in a theology degrees that I did. Wow. And I love the Psalms. And I literally, all I can think right now is, I'm getting to interview a psalmist when I hear your heart and I hear the things you say and it's so moving. And I know that our viewers are so encouraged. I'm so encouraged and I'm so excited to see what God is going to do next through your life of surrender and all the things you're doing for him and his glory. Well, I can't wait to hear you sing later in today's program. John, thank you so much for being with us in this conversation right now. You're a blessing, Lord. Bless you. Thank you so much.